It's, it's, it's indeed a privilege to be here today to share uh, with you. I'm delighted, you know, I'm just really uh, excited uh, about the opportunity to serve God and his people. I want to first um, honor the bishop, Bernard Crawford, Jr., and uh, the prophetess, Trina Crawford, we honored them. You know, they say uh, when the cat's away, yeah, we, we coming to shoot that down. You know, I'm going to tell you something. When God is governing your heart, it don't matter who's around. It don't matter who's around. It's what you call integrity. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, everything in, in this day and age is is under video surveillance. <laughs> and so you, what you think is in secret might not be. Praise the Lord. So we greet you today uh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're going to go to Mark chapter 16. And we're going to not be all day. Because I know some people got some other stuff on their mind today. But I want to tell you, listen, let me tell you something about the word of God. The word of God comes to equip you for the now and for the next. And so you can, you can be distracted if you want to. And you can look at whoever the messenger is, look at them upside the head or whatever. You know, God spoke through a donkey to spare a soothsaying wannabe prophet to protect him from doing something that would have been to his detriment. So I'm sure God could use, you know, a person like me to direct you where he wants you to go or to enlighten you or confirm what he's already been saying to you. Praise the Lord. So let's just let's just come together. Let's just have a, a moment of prayer. Can we do that? I want everybody to just stand to your feet. And what I want us to do, just close your eyes, just disconnect from whoever's around you. This ain't an intercession time. This is this is just us talking to God. And I want us to have a prayer request that God will speak to me. All right? Let's just, just two minutes, let's just pray out loud. Open your mouth up and pray. Father, we just thank you right now for this time to be in your sanctuary. We're in your house, Lord, and we greet you. We honor you. We worship you. We give you the, the praise from our lips. And we know, God, that when we are your people, we're the sheep of your pasture. We are needing direction from you. We're needing to hear from you. We're needing to know what is next. We're needing you to correct us. We're needing you to show us the way. We're needing you to enlighten our path. We're needing you to forgive us. We're needing you to wash us. We're needing you to restore us. We're needing so many things from you, God. So many of us need so many different things. We need you by your spirit to communicate to us and bring us to the point where we can hear from you. We honor you today, God, and we love you. You said you have not because you ask not. And we're asking God for you to speak to us. Have mercy upon us. Open the, our ears. Open our hearts. Open us, Lord. Remove anything that would block us from hearing clearly from you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, you can have your seats. Amen. It's important, you know, that we have faith. I went fishing with my sons uh, last week, 
And one of my sons, I had him to do the prayer, which I normally don't have him do the prayer because I like to encourage the youngest one to pray. But I had this different son of mine to do the prayer, and uh, he didn't even ask that we would catch fish or something he did. And I said, well, son, you know, the first part about prayer is you got to believe. And so we went fishing, and it seemed like everybody was catching fish but him. <laughs> and so the next time we went, I reminded him of that scenario. Now, of course, I don't feel like he got it. But there was, a, there was an evidence of our prayer in the, in the ones that was believing in prayer was catching fish. And so what I'm saying to us, our prayer had to be mixed with faith. This is not just some religious duty we're doing. We're talking to the living God. And so today we are going to be here in Mark chapter 16, and we're talking about the present versus prophecy, revelation and fulfillment. All right, can y'all repeat that after me? The present versus prophecy, revelation and fulfillment. All right, so let's start reading here, Mark 16. Y'all don't have to stand up because I don't know how long I'm going to read or when I'm going to stop. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the tomb at the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, who shall roll away the stone from the door of the tomb? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. He said unto them, Be not affrighted. You seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way. Tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall you see him. As he said unto you. That's something I want you to highlight. As he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the tomb. For they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man. For they were afraid. (sighs) This is a very difficult message. But I'm telling you, I believe in just telling people what God is saying. And I would rather be up here for 10 minutes and tell you what God said than to download something from Charles Stanley or some other great preacher and give you a good old message. And so, a lot of times, we... (laughs) have a proclivity or we're bent towards not really laying hold to prophetic things. A lot of time, you know, we've, you know, we have come from backgrounds where prophetic or prophets or prophecy is shunned. Apostolic things are shunned. Uh, Even personal prophecy and somebody telling you something about your future is looked at like as if they are a crook. But the church that Jesus died for, the church that Jesus purchased with his blood, came to be because of prophecy. Even Jesus' life, death, burial, and resurrection was a result of a prophetic utterance in Isaiah 53. 
Isaiah 53, which was hundreds and hundreds of years before Jesus came, told that he would be living a life and that he would have to die a sacrificial atoning death for those who had went astray from God. And that, that he, would, he would produce an offspring of people as a result of his sacrifice. So prophecy, really, when you come to the church, should be normal. The Bible itself is called the, the word of prophecy or the prophecy of Scripture. A lot of things that we're holding on for in the future is prophetic. The rapture, that one day those that are in the grave asleep who believe in Jesus Christ will resurrect and we that are alive will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air and so we shall ever be that's prophecy the fact that we're going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and that everything that we had done in the body will be tried by fire and we will be rewarded based on what endures that test of fire. That's prophecy. Whether we go to heaven or hell, that's prophecy. These are things that have been foretold by scriptures that we're holding on to. And so what I want to encourage us is that God has intended your life to be seasoned with prophecy. The life that you as an individual are living, the church that you belong to and its direction should be seasoned by God's inspiration from a spiritual and heavenly dimension that we don't know nothing about. Don't you know there are things that God had planned for you? And even though that sometimes we're retarded and we rebel against God, we kick against God, God has spoken something about you and he's going to bring that thing to pass? That's prophecy. He said, he that begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Christ. When is that? The end of the age. It's been prophesied that he's going to turn you into what he intended you to be. Despite your rebellion, despite your heartache, despite your sin, despite your rebelliousness, despite your, you and I, our mentality sometimes is messed up. We relegate ourselves to our, our family what our family was. We relegate ourselves to our class, our financial class. Listen to me. If you judge yourself based on your money, you're going to always mess up. Because if you get too much money, it's going to make you think you somebody special. It said in, in Jeremiah, let, the, let not the rich man glory in his riches, but, but glory in this, that you know and understand me, that I am the Lord, that I delight in righteousness, judgment, and loving kindness. See, so money can make you think something about yourself that's not true. So can poverty. Some people have, have, have you, you have settled because you looked at yourself based on the money and class and what you think your outlook is. Don't you know tomorrow God can cause you to meet somebody to change your whole destiny? I'm talking about living beyond the natural. This is how he has intended us to think and to function. See, so when we talk about Prophetic, we're talking about God has foretold us. God has inspired us. God is declaring a new message. And today I'm here to declare a new message that where you, where you see yourself right now, that's not where you're going to end. 
where you see yourself right now and how you looking at yourself right now, God has got more for you than that. I'm talking about you thinking good about yourself. You think you know the Bible. You think, well, if I was up there, I would have did this. And God got something greater than what you're thinking about yourself. Let me tell you, if you're comparing yourself to other people, you tripping. Can I just talk normal today? You're tripping because you have, the, you have a, a corrupt measuring system. Well, even the Apostle Paul said, follow me as I follow. That's the measuring stick. You have not strived unto the shedding of blood, striving against sin. Jesus lived a sinless, a sinless life. And so that's my, that's my mark. I'm not measuring myself up to Pastor B and, and Cliff and Bird and Prophet Trina. I'm tripping. This is why we need to hear God for ourselves. It will protect us. See, because some of that stuff is not even you thinking. It's a, it's a suggestion from a dark spirit. Listen to what the scripture said. God resisteth the proud. So don't you think the enemy wants you to be arrogant in your thoughts? So you have you looking at Clarence. You have you looking at David. Because you think you're more handsome than them. You think, you know, what you got something going on better than them. You're in the enemy's trap. But he gives grace to the humble. I consider myself lower than everybody. That way I'm putting myself in a position where God can lift me up. He exalts the humble. So, my first point here, Mark chapter 16, verse 3. We're talking about the present versus what? Prophecy. See, there are some things in our lives right now we so worried about. But you don't know, God already got the answer coming tomorrow. That's something we so engross. All my prayers about that. All my thoughts. I can't hardly sleep. Is about that. And God already has the solution tomorrow. And you're not a part of the solution. See here, the women that worship Jesus, they're named right here. What they was thinking about was anointing his body. And they wanted to get to Jesus to honor him and fragrance him. But the issue was, it was a big stone in the way. See, and sometimes that's our present situation, is that there's something that's hindering us in the, in the present. Maybe it's your lifestyle. Maybe, maybe it's your addiction. Maybe it's, you know... Some things that people have said about you. And it's a constant part of your thoughts. But listen, it is, a, it, is, it is the inspiration from God that will cause us to move away from worry. That's all right. You can watch the tape and it'll make a lot of sense. It's the inspiration of God that will move us from worry. The scripture says in Philippians chapter 4, he says, be anxious for nothing. What's that mean? Worrying. Overthinking. You know, that'll make you mess up. You start doing, you start doing something and mess up. But he says, instead of being anxious and being worried about stuff, but in everything, with prayer and supplication, let your request be made known unto God. But then don't stay there. Let the peace of God guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. 
up. I'm talking about prophetic. So what do I do when I see myself overly worried about something? Philippians chapter 4. You see what I'm doing? Are y'all here? And so I'm looking for some inspiration, not God saying, be still, my daughter. No, the peace of God. <laughs> that means I have to be in a I have to be in a place where I can perceive, a place where I can discern, a place where I can sense the, the peace of God coming in my life. See, we, we can't, that's a part of, of being a, a part of the church, is that we're staying in constant fellowship with God. We're staying in constant communion with God. If God was speaking to some of us, we wouldn't even know. We wouldn't even know. And that's not a knock because we all have come through. We come through this. It's a process. But I'm saying if this is where we are, it, it we, God has a development for us to grow in sensitivity. Anybody here ever felt the peace of God? Raise your hand. Let me see who I'm talking to. Oh, look at all these people. And the peace of God will guard your heart and mind through Christ Jesus. I don't got to worry about that no more. The situation haven't changed. Huh? I still had the thoughts of my kid being in trouble, but the peace of God. And so these ladies who were concerned about how big this stone was, when they showed up, the stone was gone. And that's why I'm prophesying to somebody in here, right here, uh, Brother Leafa's daughter, stand up. Yep, you brother leave his daughter. Stand up. What you are worried about, God already got the problem solved. And it's a it's a it's a it's a young man that's in the back of your mind that's a part of your constant thoughts. God already got it figured out. Let the peace of God. Rain in your heart. Quit worrying about him and what he's going to do. In time, God is going to show you what the truth is. Because can I tell you, as a prophet, you're being deceived. Look at me, sister. You're being deceived. But in time, don't take my word for it. In time, God is going to show you what I'm saying. Let the peace of God. Guard your heart. Quit worrying. Quit trying to figure and plan out how you're going to make it work. God's going to make it work. His way and his time. God bless you. And so when they showed up, the stone was already rolled away. The present verse is prophecy. And see, the, the, here, here's where the Bible is talking. They should have already knew that it was Sunday. Because he had prophesied, just like Jonah was in the belly of the well, in three days I'm going to get back up. So if they was holding on to prophecy, they shouldn't have came with that. They should have came with some clothes for him. They should have came with a, 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 a breakfast sandwich. They should have came with a white horse to celebrate the king of the Jews. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? A lot of time our lives, we just shun off what God has already said. We're looking for something else. We're trying to do something else. But if we hold on to what God has said, it will govern our life. Oh. The present versus prophecy. What are you holding on to with your life right now? If you hold on to what it looked like now, you are going to be captive to your emotions. 
You're going to be captive to the devil's suggestions. You're going to be captive to your human nature, which cannot stand in faith. It is something that God has declared for your life that you, listen, let's, let's turn to this scripture, all right? My favorite scripture in the Bible, 1 John 2, 27. I just wanted to show you this. I wanted to show you this because this is what God said, the present versus prophecy. It's something God has said that right now you should be holding on to. Your bills are so much. Your, 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 your relationship is in trouble. It's all kind of chaos in your life. But it's something that God has said that will sustain you in that mess. It's something he already said. Are we there? First John. I'll just show y'all something. Okay, here it is. Now, it wouldn't have took me so long if I wasn't using this tablet all the time. <laughs> okay, listen to me, y'all. Listen. Verse 27 says, but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you. That means it remains. God's spirit, not us spirit, not it. God himself. This is the mystery of righteousness. Jesus was God in the flesh. Now God has put his self inside of an earthen vessel. Okay? So the anointing that, that abides in you, and you are not in need that any man teach you. But the same anointing does what? Teaches you of all things and its truth and is no lie. And even as he has taught you, you shall continue in him. Do y'all see that? So whoever has gotten saved, God's spirit is inside of you, teaching you of what it is he has planned for you. He is teaching you how to be prepared for what is to come. But you know what we do? We, is, we, we wait on a person that God is using to give us that. When what I'm supposed to do, you know, I'm working hard today. What I'm supposed to do is confirm what you already heard him say. So when, I, when you hear me say it, you take off running. You take off running because I, I know God told me that. And so this is, this is a part of who we are. We're more than just church goers. We are kingdom ambassadors. We have been sent from another dimension to represent heaven here. So we're not limited to just our carnal nature. And the things that affects us as human beings, we're working off another power source. And part of that is what God is saying to us prophetically. Oh, my Lord. Okay, let me keep going. Let me keep going. I, would, I just want y'all to know I'm talking to everybody today. Okay, some things we're worried about. God has already spoken about a change. All right. Next. God encounters us in various ways to give us direction in our life. Okay. Now, see this. I, I like this kind of stuff here. You know, because it challenges us to get out of our religious place. You want, you want me to know what I'm talking about? Thinking you got God figured out. And I, I'm pleased, y'all. I'm not being condescending. I'm not being negative. I'm talking to me, too. But I've gotten to a point now where I feel like I don't know nothing about God. Because every time I'm, I'm thinking I knew, yep. <laughs> boy, 
He showed me something different. Yeah, you weren't thinking about that, was it? Oh, no, I wasn't, Lord. <laughs> and so he encounters us in different ways to, to give us direction in life. So these young ladies, now see what's pointed out is Mary Magdalene. This is important why we see Jesus encountering, not only did the, the angels encounter her, but later on Jesus came to her. Because she's the one that has seven demons. And so he wants us to know. He, he encountered Salome too and the other Mary. But he points out her because he's, he's here to encourage us, the ones of us that's been struggling. Listen, I didn't save you for nothing. You don't have to be no apostle or no prophet or no pastor or no bishop to encounter God. It's a part of the process that we who are the saints experience his presence. God encounters us in different ways. Here they saw an angel. In this, in Mark chapter 16, it was a young man in there sitting on the tomb. In, 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 in Luke 24, it was two angels in glistening apparel. Then later on, we see Jesus himself in the glorified body appearing to Mary Magdalene, giving her her marching orders. And so there is so many ways that God can encounter us to give us direction. We just have to put ourselves in a, in a posture. We just have to be there where God can encounter us. You know, one of the biggest hindrances for us encountering God is our entanglement with the world. You know what that means? TV. Man, what it, Clarence, I'm just talking to you, Clarence. When the, when the preseason started for football, people was watching the preseason like it was a Super Bowl. The Chiefs got us so gassed up on them. Five years ago, you wouldn't even had a cheap jersey. They couldn't even give away the, uh, what you call the AFC title shirt. They couldn't even give them away. Now you standing at the door before they even release them. But our entanglement with the world, we could be so involved with the world that as God's spirit is telling us, pray, come, sin. We can't hear. We can't hear. But these ladies, was they was on duty with Jesus. They was where they were supposed to be. They was there to, to honor and reverence Jesus, and they encountered angels. They got direction. Let's hear the direction here. Verse number seven. Uh, uh, I'm in the wrong thing. I'm in first John. Mark 16, 7. Everybody all right? Seven. They was in the right place. <laughs> See, I know this, this is God talking. Where was the apostles? Huh? See, they the ones that got the great commission. See, I know we I know this this is my own stuff here, so you can keep it or you can throw it away. The apostles is the one that got the great commission. Hello? Not the 120. The 11 got the great commission. Hello? But when, when the commission came at the tomb, they was hiding. So they couldn't get the commission then. They had to get it when he walked through the walls. Are y'all seeing what I'm saying? See, there's times that God has intended to counter, encounter you, and you own the cheats. You own the clearance rack. You own Facebook. Not that any of those are sins, but he said, lay aside every weight and the sin. So something is just an entrapment to take your mind and your time from the kingdom agenda. Man. 
So these young ladies was where they were supposed to be. They encountered the angels. Oh, my God. Oh, oh, Lord Jesus. God encounters us in different ways. Now, let me just say this. I'm going to give you some wisdom. You don't want to see an angel. Okay? When they appeared here, they was in another form. Even Jesus, when Jesus appeared with the two guys on the road to Emmaus Cliff, he was in another form. Because that which is celestial, that which is heavenly, that which is glorified, we can't handle. So you don't listen to somebody's testimony, and now you got the desire to see an angel. Y'all see what I'm saying? Well, if you read the Bible, people that really saw an angel, they dropped like they was dead. Daniel fell and was so weak, the angel had to come and touch him to erect him up. You see what I'm saying? But what we want and our prayer should be that, God, you will encounter me. If that's just a scripture coming alive off the page, if that's a, a billboard speaking to me, if that's a preacher saying something that confirmed what I heard in prayer, if that's a still, small voice, if that's an angel, if that's an epiphany, if that's a dream, if that's a vision, if that's a trance, however you want to encounter me. I'm putting myself in a position because I need you to direct me. Hallelujah. You, you can't navigate. We're in a foreign land. As we operate in this earth, we're, we're from another kingdom. We're from the heavenly kingdom. The spirit has been put in us. And we're on assignment to fulfill the king's mission. When Jesus and the, and the apostles and all them started preaching, the kingdom of God is at hand. The kingdom of God. If I cast out demons with my finger, the key, kingdom of God has come to you. That's what we represent. But we're in another land. That runs on natural principles. They'll sell you a pop with a bikini. See, that's how that system works. You know what I'm saying? They'll, they'll give you free pop to come put your money in the slot machine. See, it's all a trap for somebody else's pockets to be satisfied. They use your weakness to make merchandise of you. That's how this system works. And we have to be careful as believers that we don't live our lives by that system. Hallelujah. All right? So God encounters us in various ways to give us direction in our life. He told them in verse 7, go your way and tell the disciples and Peter that he, that he goes before you into Galilee there you will see him as he said to you. Guess what that is? Prophecy. The angel told the ladies to prophesy to the apostles to be. You see that? But you know what we say, well, as soon as I say that, there ain't nobody. You know? God can give you some. You don't have to say, the Lord, thus saith the Lord. But I can be praying and in a dream, and I see Alice, and I see Alice in trouble, and then I just the next time I see Alice, I'm reminded that, you know what, Alice, I just feel the Spirit of the Lord show me that you're in some trouble. Can we pray? That's prophetic. How am I supposed to know what's going on in her life? But we scared. Oh, we so scared. Oh, you, you must be a false prophet. You can't be a false prophet if you're saved. It's quiet in the church. You can't be a false prophet. You can be a fake. You can be a liar. What you're saying is false, but you can't be a false prophet. A false prophet is not a brother. It's a wolf in a suit. See, so if I say something that ain't right and y'all call me a false prophet, I know you don't read the Bible. <laughs> See, I already know. 
I take the correction. Okay, I might have missed that. But give it some time. All right, next. I got two things left to say. Number three is beware of being relaxed in unbelieving. Y'all hear that? Beware of being relaxed. You know what will make you relax? When you feel like you, you, you got over. You got enough money. You paid your bills. You got a little extra. We get relaxed. I got several outfits I can pick out from. Singles month, I can every every singles month event, I got a different outfit on. They'll never see me in the same thing this month. Relax. When 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 we are when we live in pleasure, we can get relaxed. This is why it's important for us to make ourselves go on a fast. Boy, this, this is, yeah. We make ourselves go on a fast because I want to make sure, Sister Marquita, I'm not in the flesh. Man, I didn't cook ribs and chicken and bratwurst. I didn't ate all that all week. I didn't enjoy it back. I didn't see my sons. We didn't have fun. Me and my wife enjoyed ourselves. Went out to lunch. Let me let me go on a fast. You know, men, it's easy for us. Now, I've never been a woman, never want to be a woman. So I can't speak on that. But a man, when you find yourself where your appetites increase for the three-letter word that begin with the S and an X, you need to go on a fast. See, what we do is say Mary, uh, uh, Hebrews 13, verse 4. I'm in Hebrews 14, verse 3. Marriage is honorable and the bed is undefiled. That don't mean that you just live your life as an a agent of, uh, what do they call that? No, uh, intercourse. I'm trying to be good here, okay? Just because you're married don't mean that you just lust out of control. We're not talking about sinners. We're talking about people in the kingdom. A fruit of the spirit is called self-control. So there are some times when you may have the desire, when you can tell the desire, hold up, buddy. I'm going on a fast today. And that, that will, man, I wish we wasn't on live, but that, that will make your relationship more pleasant. I think I said that right. If you are, you, are, you, are, you are a person, that a man that's lascivious, your wife, she will have headaches. She will find reasons to, yeah. You're doing too much. Am I, am I helping anybody? I mean, if, if we're going to live for God, let's go on and live for God. You got a misconception if you think every time you got an urge, that's her job is to fulfill your urge. You're messed up. You're ruled by the flesh. You're ruled by the flesh. So it don't matter if she on a fast or not. Do your wifely duty. You're in the flesh, sir. And the women said what? Amen. Don't say it too loud. Y'all going to make them mad. Y'all going to make them mad. But I just, I'm here to, as the minister of God to help you. Yeah. So beware of being relaxed and unbelieving. Let's look at verse 9. Uh, this is Mark chapter 16, verse 9. I'm almost done. I got one more point after this. All right, it says, when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, he appeared to Mary, out of whom he had cast seven devils. Oh, that's powerful. And when, 
when he picked the he picked her to be to be the spearhead of this evangelical mission, this prophetic mission, this apostolic mission, the one that has seven devils, not not uh, the one the lady Salome who was uh, the two of his. Uh, 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 closest uh, uh, disciples, mama, who said, look, which I want one son over here and one son over there. So she was, she was in the mix. She wasn't full of devils. But he didn't come to her. He went to the one that had the devils. See, so what you thinking God going to do, you don't have a clue what God's going to do. This is what's called sovereignty. He pick who he want to pick. He do what he want to do. And you the one he going to pick. Why wouldn't he pick you? And she went and told them that that had been with him as they mourned and wept. And, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. Just apostles. After, after that, he appeared to another form unto two of them. This is a part of the other disciples. Could have been the 70. Could have been some of the 120. We don't know exactly who these are. We know their name. But we don't know exactly, but it wasn't the 12 or the 11. He appeared to two more, right, in another form on the road to Emmaus, and he preached the whole Bible to them. Oh, I said, God, I want that right there. <laughs> I want Jesus to talk to me about the law of Moses. I want Jesus to talk to me about the prophets, all of them, the minor and the major, and the Psalms. He, he spent the time and broke all that down to them and showed him him in them. So how many of us in here can go through there and, and bring that out to the church? Don't raise your hand. Don't do it. That's a lot. He gave it to them like that. Then he, let me quit here. Okay. And so uh, after that, he opened, he appeared in a, they didn't believe after them two told him. After that, he appeared in another form unto two of them. They walked and went into the country. And then they went and told it unto the residue. Neither believed they them. See that? So what I'm saying to you, present versus prophecy. There are some things that God has said. Look, even in this Bible. And these signs shall follow Daryl French. Y'all hear that? What's the sign? They shall cast out demons. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. If they drink any daily thing, it shall not harm them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. Not the prophets, not the bishops, not the apostles, but them that believes. But we don't believe that. That's what Bishop Crawford and Sister Trent. I'm just saying sometimes when we get comfortable, we'll let somebody else. We go out on the streets and witnessing. I want to be in so-and-so group because, you know, they're going to do all the talking. You have gotten comfortable and unbelieving because God has given you power to be a witness. But the reason why we don't get in that, because we ain't staying in the fellowship with him. We're not holding on to the things he says. We're governing ourselves by what we think. I'm telling y'all, listen. The, the apostle prophesied to us, and I say this another time, that this church right here, we are for the rise and the fall of many. That was prophesied. You know when he said that? Way back in the, when it was cold. I'm holding that because I'm expecting somebody's life to go up as a result of me. And all these devils that's, that's doing what they're doing, if they don't get saved, guess where they're going? Down. Because of me. He said, touch not my anointing, do my servant no harm. You mess with me, you're messing with God. And I ain't got to call God down on you. God already done said it. I wish I had a witness in here. Be, 
beware of being relaxed and unbelieving. It's time for us to lay hold on what the scripture is telling us about ourselves. If he said these signs shall, shall uh, um, follow them, what, what have you ever demonstrated in your Christian life out of them? If he said that he gave everybody a gift, which one do you got? If he said that uh, 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 the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy, faith, uh, uh, doing, working miracles, healings, speaking in tongues, uh, interpretation of tongues is a manifestation of the spirit, why are you not a manifesting the spirit? If the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, goodness, why aren't you not demonstrating these things? It's not God's fault. You see, these are things we got to look at because it's not just up to the ministry team to do the work. We are a one unit. That's why it's called the body of Christ. So I got to hold on to my prophecy. You got to hold on to your prophecy. So at time when I need to be encouraged, you can encourage me. But you expect me all the time. I got to give you something. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's sometimes how we, we're, we're not thinking properly. Yeah. It is a time that Sister Trina needs you to prophesy to her. Yeah. Why every week she got the... <laughs> to get the motor going. Why we can't come in here with a motor going and, 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 and encourage her. Yeah. And prophesy to her. I'm just saying, that's something we should desire. But a lot of times, we're relaxed. Oh, prophet has got it. All these prophetic people in here. Oh, there's so many prophetic people in here. She got it. What? It's 75 people up in here that needs to be prayed for. All right, last one. So beware of being relaxed and unbelieving. No matter how many times they heard the word, the testimony, they didn't believe. And so, no matter how many times you have read and seen certain stuff in the Bible, oh, yeah, I see it, but you don't believe it. Believing means that you lay hold to it. All right, lastly. Let's go to verse uh, 17. You are destined to be effective and bear the signs of the power of the kingdom. Y'all hear that? You are destined to be effective. That means when you put your, forth your effort to serve God and serve people for God, it will work well. See, it don't mean that you will be the one to lead them in the sinner's prayer. But it may be that what you said bring conviction about smoking. Or bring conviction about fornicating. Or bring conviction about masturbating. Or bring conviction about lying and stealing off your job. You planted that seed which brings them closer to the point where I know I'm wrong, I need help getting right, the next person is going to bring them Jesus. But you, can, you, you are destined to be effective and not just be. Some people, listen, I don't care how much they say Jesus, you don't want to hear them because of one mouth they saying Jesus, the next mouth they cussing. I don't even want to hear them. Or one mouth they Jesus, the next thing they talking bad about somebody. I know y'all ain't never met nobody like that. You're not effective. But when you are straight, they may call you a square, a weirdo, or whatever. But if you remain consistent, you're going to be effective to the one whose heart is open to God. Everybody's not going to heaven. So some people, just like Jesus, some people, Jesus just passed on. So let me read the verse here, 17. And these signs shall follow them that believe. 
In my name, they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. Now, we see this. We're not talking about you going in the woods looking for a snake. We've seen this with the Apostle Paul because they lived in the terrain with vipers. And when he was gathering wood for the fire because he prophesied the lives of all these prisoners will be saved. They wanted to kill all the prisoners, and he prophesied, no. When he picked up the wood to put it on the fire, he pulled his hand out, and it was a viper hanging off of him. And they said, oh, he must have been a murderer or something. But over time, they didn't count it. Okay, one, two, three, four. He's still doing what he's doing. He shook it off and kept on going. It was a demonstration that the message, that was a sign that the message he was preaching was the truth. And the God that he served was really God. And so there's people, there's people who want to sabotage you on your job. And they setting stuff up, telling lies on you, doing this, working witchcraft and pl- planning all this stuff for you to go down. And you come in, they give you a raise. You come in, they give you another, a higher position. Nothing that they're doing is working, and it's a sign that the God you serve is really God. Hello? It's not just about speaking in tongues. See? A lot of people that are speaking in tongues, especially in church, they really need to tone it down a bit. Because you're edifying yourself, and the person next to you is irritated. And unless God is using you prophetically to declare a message, which he will make room for, you just need to go on and edify yourself, but don't do it so loud. Can anybody say anything that knows the Bible? We're not talking about in a little private group. We're talking about in the the open surface where it could be unbelievers in here, people that don't know. Listen, when we're around people that don't know or are unbelievers, we always use things that can be easily understood. That's called being spiritual and being mature. So don't just be spiritual, be mature. I speak in tongues all the time, but I guarantee a lot of people never even heard me. Well, you might have, but <laughs> all right. So you are destined to be effective and bear the signs of the power of the kingdom. Okay, let me read this last verse, and we're, we're done. Uh, they should take up servants, any drink, and any deadly thing. It shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So after then, after the Lord has spoken unto them, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. Here's what I'm trying to get to. And they... After all this, they didn't believe, they was relaxed, that you know, all these different things they went through, and they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So what I'm saying in closing is that's the level of effectiveness we must all be walking in. Now, if you just got saved and you knew, God bless you. But this includes you. Everybody that has the Holy Spirit has the ability of demonstrating the signs that the Spirit is there. And when God wants to do that, it's because what you're saying out your mouth needs to be confirmed. You see what I'm saying? He's not just doing stuff just to be doing it. It's a confirmation to let people know what you're saying is the truth. So that means that we got to we got to activate ourselves by opening our mouths around people. Not so much that I'm always preaching the gospel, but I'm talking about my life with God. Hello? They start telling the jokes about under, up under the woman's dress. Listen, if they saying around me and I can't get away, I'm saying something. I'm saying something. They come to me talking about somebody, I'm saying something. And so then God, God 
works along with me with signs to them to show them what this man is doing. He's on business with me. See, God is there with us. He's there with us. It doesn't matter what title you have. You, um, um, 1 Corinthians 5, 17, all the way down to 20, you have been given the ministry of reconciliation. You are an ambassador for God. You're not just an earthly person. So God is in partnership with you to represent his kingdom here. If you whatever, you don't even have a church, but you say God is working with you. And so I want to encourage everybody. Let's just stand to our feet. We, we're done.